Could Denisovans have migrated from Asia into the Americas 70,000 years ago? The evidence will shock you. Could humans, part Denisovan, part Neanderthal, part Homo sapiens, have reached the Americas 50,000 years ago or even 100,000 years ago? A new synthesis of fossil, genetic and climate data suggests a bold possibility. They were born in the shadows of giants, sons and daughters of hunters and survivors, bred of fire and ice, shaped by lineage both ancient and unknown. Part modern, part archaic, they were not entirely of this world, nor were they welcome in the world of others. Their ancestors had looked into the eyes of Denisovans and Neanderthals and had not run. They had mixed. They had fought. And now the blood of the past surged in their veins. Around 50,000 years ago, as ice licked at the mountains of Asia and the winds howled across the open steppes, these hybrid humans, part Homo sapiens, part Denisovan, part Neanderthal, began to move. Not just away from something, but toward something, toward freedom, toward land, toward a destiny beyond the reach of the tribes that scorned or feared them. They would not stop until they reached the edge of the world. And for some, that edge was the Americas, a place no one else had dared to go. Born in the ancient wind-beaten mountains of Siberia and the vast, unforgiving steppes of Asia, these hybrid humans emerged around 50,000 years ago, the product of a thousand years of mingling between three hominin lineages, Denisovans, Neanderthals and modern humans. In fact, habitat modelling suggests significant overlap between Denisovan and Neanderthal habitat in Siberia, especially between 78,000 and 120,000 years ago, extending east to Lake Baikal and Mongolia. They were stronger, more cold-adapted, with lungs shaped by the wind and muscles born of meat and bone, but they were also more alone, pushed to the margins, hunted, forgotten. Beringia 50,000 years ago was not even a challenge compared to living on the high Tibetan plateau during much colder climates which their ancestors had evolved. In fact, some type of humans could have easily migrated into the Americas almost any time. The only times when Beringia was underwater was during the last interglacial around 120,000 years ago. And the only time that Canada was completely closed off by ice was during the last glacial maximum from around 28,000 to 13,000 years ago. The discovery and genetic analysis of the 34,000-year-old Salkit woman from Mongolia has transformed our understanding of early human ancestry in East Asia and its connection to the broader story of human migration, including the peopling of the Americas. By analysing ancient DNA from the skull cap found in the Salkit Valley, Researchers revealed that this early modern human female carried significant genetic admixture from both East and West Eurasian populations, as well as traces of Denisovan DNA. These findings provide compelling evidence that hybridization between modern humans and Denisovans occurred not just once, but multiple times and in different regions of Asia. Furthermore, the timing and geographic distribution of this Denisovan ancestry has important implications for the hybrid migration of humans into the Americas. Modern humans were already in central Eurasia by at least 45,000 years ago, and in northern China by 40,000 years ago, and likely much before then. The Salkit individual's genome reflects a unique genetic makeup. Approximately 75% of her ancestry came from an East Eurasian population related to the 40,000-year-old Tianyuan individual from near Beijing, while the remaining 25% was linked to a West Eurasian population closely related to the Siberian Yana people. This West-East gene flow predates her lifetime, suggesting that interbreeding between these populations occurred thousands of years earlier, likely in the vast steppes and forests of Siberia. Crucially, both the Salkit and Tianyuan individuals carried Denisovan DNA. But this ancestry was distinct from that found in Papuans and Aboriginal Australians. This strongly supports the existence of multiple Denisovan admixture events, including one that contributed specifically to the gene pool of early East Asians and ultimately to the first Americans. The connection to the Americas becomes clear when considering that Native American populations derive most of their ancestry from East Asian groups, particularly those who once inhabited Siberia. The Salkit individual lived only a few thousand years, 
before the likely migration of hybrid East Asian Siberian groups across Beringia into the Americas. Genetic models place the formation of ancient Native American populations around 25,000 to 20,000 years ago, when small hybrid groups likely followed animal herds across the ice-free corridor of Beringia. The Denisovan segments in the Salkit genome overlap significantly with those in present-day East Asians and Native Americans, but not with Oceanian groups, suggesting that the East Asian source population that carried these Denisovan genes was ancestral to the population that eventually settled the Americas. This hybrid population was not only genetically mixed with both Neanderthals and Denisovans, but also culturally and behaviorally adapted to diverse and often extreme environments from the forests and rivers of East Asia to the frozen tundra of northeastern Siberia. Their success in these environments set the stage for the eventual crossing into the Americas, bringing with them the genetic legacies of multiple hominin lineages. The Salkit genome is a snapshot of this pivotal moment. A hybrid human, carrying the biological legacy of Neanderthal, Denisovan, and anatomically modern human ancestors, living in a region that would become the launch point for one of humanity's greatest migrations. By 50,000 years ago, Eurasia was already a patchwork of hominin populations. Modern humans were spreading from Southeast Asia into East Asia and Siberia. Neanderthals remained in parts of Europe and Western Asia. And in the cold mountain regions of the Altai and Tibetan Plateau, another group, the mysterious Denisovans, thrived in ecological niches too harsh for others. In this crucible of Ice Age survival, these three human species did more than coexist. They interbred. Evidence from Denisova Cave in Siberia confirms that by around 90,000 years ago, hybrid children were already being born. The famous individual known as Denny was one such child. Her mother was a Neanderthal, her father a Denisovan. Later, Homo sapiens too would join this mix. The result? A new kind of human physically robust, genetically diverse, and unusually well adapted to cold and high-altitude environments, and possibly bold enough to explore what no other human had yet dared, the vast, uninhabited expanse of Beringia, and beyond that, the empty continents of the Americas. This theory challenges the standard model of human migration into the New World, which places the first entry around 15,000 years ago via Beringia by modern humans carrying Clovis-style tools. But a growing body of genetic evidence, ancient skulls, and climatic reconstructions suggest a far older, deeper story. One that begins in the highlands of Siberia, sweeps through East Asia, and ends with the ghosts of giants in Patagonia. The Altai Mountains, where Denisova Cave sits, represent a remarkable intersection of archaic and modern human lineages. Here, between 100,000 and 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens migrating north from Southeast Asia encountered both Neanderthals and Denisovans. The environment was harsh, bitterly cold winters, short summers, thin air. Yet genetic evidence shows that interbreeding occurred multiple times, creating complex lineages with ancestry from all three hominin groups. These hybrid populations likely inherited the EPAS1 gene from Denisovans a gene that helps modern Tibetans and Sherpas survive at high altitudes by regulating oxygen levels in the blood. They also carried robust skeletons, large teeth, and strong limb proportions from Neanderthals. From Homo sapiens, they inherited cultural flexibility, social structure, and perhaps the drive to move. Crucially, these people were not dominant. As newer, more socially cohesive Homo sapiens groups moved into Asia from the West, these hybrid populations were pushed out, marginalized geographically and reproductively. The hybrids did not vanish. They moved to the edges of the world. Perhaps the controversial mammoth-bothering site in San Diego is a remnant of that migration, but there is little archaeological evidence over 30,000 years old. Migration into the Americas required a precise set of environmental conditions. Between 50,000 and 40,000 years ago, Earth experienced a period of dramatic climate fluctuation known as Marine Isotope Stage 3. Within this era were multiple warm pulses, interstadials, which temporarily created habitable corridors across regions otherwise dominated by ice, wind and permafrost. 
One such event, Greenland into Stardial 14, occurred around 50,000 to 47,000 years ago. During this time, the Bering Land Bridge, known as Beringia, was fully exposed due to sea levels dropping by nearly 100 metres. This corridor stretched up to 1,500 kilometres wide, linking Siberia to Alaska. It was not glaciated and hosted a unique steppy tundra ecosystem, rich in game such as mammoths, bison and horses. For cold-adapted, highly mobile hybrid humans, this was an irresistible pull. The push, meanwhile, came from competition and displacement in East Asia. Homo sapiens groups moving in from Central Asia with more advanced blade toolkits and denser social networks made survival harder for isolated hybrid bands. And so, family groups turned northeast, crossed Siberia, and followed the mammoth trails into Beringia. One important figure in this story is Tianyuan Man, a modern human whose remains were discovered near Beijing and dated to around 40,000 years ago. Genetic sequencing of Tianyuan's remains shows that he was closely related to modern East Asians and indigenous Americans, but not to Europeans. Importantly, he shows no direct Denisovan ancestry, suggesting that his population may have arrived after the hybrids had moved out. Tianyuan Man helps bracket the timeline. The hybrid migrants must have already departed or become isolated in northeastern Asia by the time his lineage expanded. His genetic profile supports the idea that multiple waves of migration occurred in East Asia, with some groups moving on before others arrived. Some ancient Native American skulls do not match typical Native American morphology. Instead, they share features with Denisovans and Australo-Melanesians, longer crania, more robust facial bones and archaic traits. This morphology aligns with other early South American remains, such as those from Lagoa Santa in Brazil. Some genetic studies have identified a so-called population Y signal in Amazonian tribes like the Surui and Caritiana, which shows distant affinity to Denisovan and Australasian populations. How could this be? One explanation is that an early migration of hybrid humans carrying both Denisovan and Australasian-like DNA reached the Americas before the main Beringian wave. These people, perhaps resembling early Southeast Asians or Papuan-like groups, may have moved rapidly along the Pacific coast, reaching South America tens of thousands of years ago. Over time, they were partially replaced, but their echoes remain. Perhaps the most tantalizing hint of early hybrid populations in the Americas comes not from bones or genes, but from legend. Early European explorers reported encountering extraordinarily tall people in Patagonia. Ferdinand Magellan's crew described men twice their height, with deep voices and massive frames. These Patagonies became infamous in travel literature. Later, anthropologists dismissed these reports as exaggeration. Yet, archaeological finds in South America include bones of individuals well over six feet tall, unusually robust for hunter-gatherer populations. Could these have been the last remnants of a hybrid people, descended from Denisovans known for their large body size and cold adaptations? While no genetic data confirms this, the legends align with what we might expect from a peripheral, long-isolated population derived from archaic modern admixture. They may have survived in the southern reaches of the continent, forgotten by time, until they vanished. As stated, habitat modelling suggests overlap between Denisovan and Neanderthal habitat in Siberia between 78,000 and 120,000 years ago, extending east to Beringia. This theory remains speculative, but compelling. It proposes that long before Clovis, before even the Beringian standstill, a wave of hybrid humans left Asia in search of land, silence and self-determination. They crossed Beringia during a rare climate window and expanded into unoccupied continents. They did not build empires or monuments. They carried no flags. Their technology was simple, their numbers few. But they were free, and their legacy survives in the bones of ancient Americans, in the Denisovan signal in Amazonian DNA, in the outlier skulls of the far north, and perhaps even in the tall tales of Patagonian giants. These were people who chose distance over dominance, isolation over assimilation. They were the original pioneers.
and they may have been the first to call the Americas home. 